all he's done for you and all those things. Amen. Thought you wasn't going to make it and here you are. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Father, I thank you today. Did you know that the last five minutes of the day. I give you glory and honor and thanksgiving and praise and admiration for all that you accomplished today in me and through me. Thank you so much for every person in here, Father God. I pray that their hearts are ready to receive, Father God, uh, the incorruptible seed, Lord God. And Father, use me, Lord God. Oh, as I decrease, you increase. Use my mind to think through. Use my mouth to speak through, Lord God. What thus says the Lord, cause your people to be doers of your word and not just hearers only. So, Father, I thank you today and I praise you as we go down this route, Lord God. We're governed by the Holy Spirit. To you be glory and honor, thanksgiving and praise, both now and forever in Jesus name amen and thank God you may be seated in the presence of the Lord before you start um, or did you want me to go ahead Rick? <laughs> go you want me to go ahead all right I just, just go ahead don't worry about it amen um, we still gonna deal with um, everything we've been dealing with and that's how you're thinking and things of that sort um, just just get a hold of and, and I'll print it hopefully next week I'll print out the vision on a little card or something like that. But the vision of this church is really to deal with the mind of people, especially those in the body of Christ. There's nothing I can do for a person that's not saved except for get them saved. Amen. And then we can believe with their unbelief. But when you're saved, if you don't come to church, if you don't get a brand new mindset, then it's not a whole lot we can do for you, especially when you're talking about asking God for certain things. And it may not be the will of God for, for you know, you got to find out if that's his will. And the only way you're going to find out if that's his will is by renewing his mind. Right. Amen. So so that's why it's so important to take your time and really deal with you. Amen. You have to, listen. Now, you have to deal with you. Amen. You, you and, and you becoming one. Y'all understand you, you, you got to have you got to have this oneness about you so that your words mean something. Amen. You got to have this oneness about that about you so that you won't lead yourself off somewhere. <laughs> Amen. Amen. You led away. So so that's why it's so important to make certain that you're thinking the right thing. People that don't think the right thing, they can't have the right feeling. If you don't have the right feeling, guess what? I mean, your belief system is off. Amen. This is why God gave us all this stuff. And that's what my job is, to take all of this stuff, dismantle it, and then put this stuff back together so that you can see that you don't have to be, listen at this, you don't have to be sorry about nothing. Y'all hear what I'm saying? You ain't got to be filled with anxiety. You don't have to be double-minded. Amen. You can always have joy. Matter of fact, you'll, you'll start figuring, trying to figure out why other folks don't have joy. What, what's, what is it? And most of the time, people don't have joy simply because they don't understand how the body works. So they got, they're attached to something. And when you're attached to something and it's not God, you're going to produce something that is not God. Amen. So that's why it's so important. And this is why we take our time with all of the stuff that's dealing with your soul. So we're going to go ahead and start out like God wanted me to do. First of all, I want to tell you this, too, that every seat in here has been anointed by God. So you're sitting somewhere where I believe that God is going to do something to you. I'm talking about that has never done before. So you got to be praying for me that he bring it out just for you. And, I, and <clears throat> Amen. And, and I'm saying that because I this morning I, I took this and I, I, every seat I, I made sure I know it every seat every door I know it every door what well, ain't no magic in this but when you dedicate it to the Lord amen then all kinds of stuff happen I mean you think about Peter in, 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 a, in a handkerchief a healing folks and different things God will use inanimate objects just to do things just to show you something simply because you think you know it all amen <laughs> amen so we'll go ahead and start with first Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 23 Amen. And so this is just going to give you the makeup, especially for those that don't know. This is elementary to some, but of course, we still have to do things elementarily, right? <laughs> if that's a word, but we have to deal with it this way. So this is what it says. And God, the very the, and the very God of peace, sanctify you wholly. Amen. And I pray God, your your whole spirit. It didn't say God's spirit. It says your whole spirit and your soul and your body be what? Be blameless, be preserved blameless until the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
so all of who you are is supposed to be in one place agreeing and as it agree, you agree with everything, then you'll see your life progressively go forward. See, see, if, see if my battery don't agree with my alternator, we still gonna be sitting in the driveway, right? <laughs> On Sunday. <laughs> Amen, so, so you gotta get this vessel under control and that's what this job is that we have to do we got to get this vessel under control amen so now that we see that that's the way it's supposed to be that god wants you complete let's look at that in the amplified classic real quick so that they can see this and, and see that everything that i be telling you from marriage to relationship to finances to, to healing and all of that stuff has nothing to do with me it has something to do with god and it are principles so when god the king says something in the word of a king there's power Amen. So you have to believe stuff, not based off what I'm saying, based off what he said. And I'm saying what he said. So if you do what he said, the power that to get this thing done, it'll be in your hands. Amen. So watch this. And, my, and may God of peace himself sanctify you through and through, separate you from profane things. Y'all see that? Make you pure and wholly consecrated to God and may your spirit and soul and body be preserved uh, sound and complete and found uh, blameless at the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, so that's that's what God wants from you. So he really is trying to complete you. And here, here's the crazy thing about it. Most people think he's talking about completing you by the end of your life. Well, that, that's kind of foolish, God. Why would you complete me at the end of my life when I need you need to use me right now? See, see, I, he got to use you now. He says, seek him early. A lot of folks think he's talking about seek him early in the morning. No, he's talking about in your <laughs> He's talking about in your life. See, he, he ain't got you down here for nothing. He wants you to do something with your life. Put this up there, Philippians 1 and 6. He want to complete you. Amen. He want to complete you. Amen. Watch this. Being confident in this very thing that he that which began that good work. The good work is you being saved. So he that began the good work on the inside of you. He's going to work it until the and perform it until the time of Jesus Christ. Amen. So he wants to finish you. Amen. So so when you are born again. Amen. You are born again by God's spirit. Amen. You're born again by God's spirit. So let's look at that. That's John 3 3. Watch this. John 3, 3. Watch this. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I said unto you, Except a man, what? Be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So now we're talking about perception. Now we're talking about seeing in part, like in a cloudy glass, the Bible says. So once a person is born again, the ability to now see the supernatural is there. Amen. Amen. So we talk about those fourth dimensions and things like that. People don't understand. Well, you came through that door today, right? Well, you're not out there now, but you're in here, right? I say when you leave, then you're going somewhere else. Or if you go to the bathroom or something like that. Well, that's what we see in the three dimensional world. But if you was to elevate a little bit, amen, above you, then you can see all three. Because time has nothing to do with it when it comes to God. He can see you coming in, coming here, going out and all those things. Amen. Amen. See, that's how that's how it works. Now you're talking about a four dimensional thing. God has listen to this. God has already successfully made you successful. But but it comes down to your choices. See, amen. So he already predestined you for success. He predestined you for victory. Amen. He's already done that. Amen. But you have to choose him. And see, you used to have to do it according to the law, right? The law being the Old Testament and things like that. But when you, when, 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 this is why people that, that, and I'm just saying, I ain't talking about nobody's church. But I'm saying, you cannot stay tied to some traditional church, amen, that, where the life of God can be expressed. Because you're supposed to actually, listen to this, and it's going to sound crazy. You're actually supposed to die with Christ, right? crucified with Christ, right? But now you live because he raised from the dead. So you had to actually get rid of the law. And I, and, and I know folks going to say something about that. But you act, let's just put this up there. Um, Romans chapter one, uh, Romans chapter seven. Let's start at verse one. Now I'm going to read a little bit. Put this in the Passion Bible so that they can see this. Watch this and see how crazy our flesh act against 
a God because we're trying to keep the law or something like that. Watch this now. This, this ain't no indictment against no married folks or nothing like that. I'm just trying to show you how all this stuff works. Okay. So this is this is going to be Romans chapter seven verses one in the Passion Bible, and and I'm gonna read. It's gonna be kind of extensive, but I'm gonna stop at some places so that you can get an understanding. Okay. I'm talking about yourself. Because I believe that every person in here, since, since, uh, since, you, wanna, since you came to church, you really want to serve God. I believe that. But how to perform it is something totally different. Right? I, I'm talking about if you're human. So you can never get stuck in some tradition that's going to give you that righteousness to be around God. No, 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 no. It never works like that. If you don't understand and receive right righteousness simply because Jesus has already done that. Amen. If you don't do that, you can't walk in holiness. See, see, this holy holiness is not born out of righteousness. I, I, I mean, righteousness is not doesn't come from holiness. Righteousness comes from Jesus, and holiness comes from the fact that you have to perform that now. Y'all understand? That's the difference between the two. All right, now watch this. I write this to you, dear brothers and sisters, who are familiar with the. Uh, Law, law being the first five books of the Bible and including all the other books up to Malachi. OK, that's all of the books of the Bible right there in the Old Testament. That's the law. So I write this under you, brothers and sisters who are familiar with the law. Don't you know that when a person dies, it ends his obligation to the law? It ends his obligation to the law, and he's going to make reference to that being married. That's why I said just, just hold on. Why is this? It ends your. So, for example, for example, a married couple is bound by the law to remain together until separated by death. All right. But when one spouse dies, the other is released from the law of marriage. Everybody agree with that, right? Keep going. Watch this. So then, if a wife is joined to another man while still married, and so many people get this stuff mixed up, but watch this now. Still married, she commits adultery. But if her husband dies, she is obviously free from the marriage contract and, and may marry another man without being charged with adultery. Keep going. Now watch this now, because it's relating to the body of Christ. So, my dear brothers and sisters, the, the same principle applies to your relationship with God. For you died to your first husband, which was the law. Yeah, yeah, y'all see that, don't you? So, so traditional churches don't. Just, you just got to get this: that the law is not going to help you. Amen. It, it, that that ain't going to do nothing for you. Matter of fact, you're supposed to divorce that. Because now your, your life is hid in Christ Jesus. So I don't have to perform no more. Mm, hallelujah. All right. So the law being uh, so for you die to the first husband, the law being uh, by being co-crucified with the body of the Messiah. So you are now free to marry another. He gave you the example early. The one who was raised from the dead so that you may now bear spiritual fruit unto God. You weren't able to bear spiritual fruit until you got with Jesus. Amen. Keep going. Watch this now. When we were merely living natural lives, I'm talking about your natural life when you, were, you didn't know nothing about God. Watch this. When you were living your natural lives, the law through defining sin actually awakened sinful desires within us. Which resulted in bearing fruit to death. So in other words, if I didn't know nothing about the Bible, didn't know any of that stuff, then God couldn't charge me with anything that was wrong. But it was until I read the word of God, the law, and it defined something on the inside of me. And it was messed up because it had me going towards death. Watch this. Keep going. Watch this now. But now that we have been fully released from the power of the law, boy, the... We are dead to what once controlled us, which was the law, right? And our lives are no longer motivated by our obsolete way of following the written code. Y'all see that? And you got these, they make religions that they follow religious codes simply because they really believe they're getting closer to God. That mess don't work. Go ahead and serve them on, on Saturday if you want to. Amen. It doesn't matter to me. You can serve him. I serve him Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday, Friday and Saturday to the next Sunday. 
I, I'm just saying, you know, I'm talking about you, you know, like one man said, so when was Christmas? I don't care. Did he, was he born? Yes. So I don't care if it was January 1st, January or July the 4th, September the 3rd, December the 25th. It does not matter. Did, was he, did he, was he born? Yes, he was. So stop throwing away the fact that he was born, trying to erase the facts with some truth you don't found about when it was. See, that don't make that don't make no sense at all. OK, so but now we leave, we have fully released from the power of the law. We are dead to once controlled us and our lives are no longer motivated by obsolete way of following the written code so that now we may serve God by living in the freshness of a new life in the power of the Holy Ghost. Y'all hear that? Now, keep keep going. Keep going. Watch this now. Uh, so, so what, what shall we say about all this? Am I suggesting that the law is sinful? Oh, no, it's not sinful. Of course not. In fact, it was the law that gave us the clear definition of sin. For example, when the law said do not covet, it became the catalyst to see how wrong it was for me to crave what belongs to someone else. So that, that's the law. Keep going. Watch this now. And then you'll see how small we are only to see how large we are when it comes to God. Right. It was, it was through God's commandment that sin was awakened in me and built its base of operation within me to stir up every kind of wrong desire. For in the absence of the law, sin hides dormant. So if there ain't no law, you don't feel anything. And you feel like you're doing something. Until the law comes and said, no, nah, you're just as wrong as everybody else. Amen. Amen. And I'll show you that in a minute. Keep going. Amen. I once lived without a clear understanding of the law. So the people that live without that law. But when I heard God's commandment, sin sprang to life and brought me in, into the death sentence. The commandment that was intended to bring life brought me death instead. Oh my God, every person out there that is religious and traditional, you ought to get, you ought to get a hold of this. Amen. So you'll understand that your life is going to be in Christ Jesus, your righteousness is in him, and it ain't nothing you can do in your own strength to get this salvation except for get him. And when you get him, you got salvation. Amen? Hallelujah. Keep going. Hallelujah. Sin by means of commandment built a base of operation within me to overpower me and put me to death. That's the sin that's on the inside of every last one of us. Keep going. Watch this. So then we have to conclude that the problem is not with the law itself. For the law is holy and its commandments are correct and for our good. Watch this now. Keep going. Watch this. So did something meant to be good become death to me? Certainly not. It was not the law, but sin unmasked that produced my spiritual death. Y'all heard that? The sacred commandment merely uncovered the evil of sin. It could be seen for what it is. For we know that the law is definitely or divinely inspired and comes from the spiritual realm. But I am a human being made of flesh and trafficked as a slave unto sin's authority. Y'all hear that? I'm a mystery to myself. I'm a mystery to myself. For I want to do what is right, but end up doing it. What his moral instinct condemns. I, 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 I really want to do what's right. What about it, Shante? <laughs> Keep going. And if my behavior, oh my God. And if my behavior is not in line with my desires. You see how, how scattered we are? My behavior, what I'm doing, it is not in line with what I desire. We, we messed up. <laughs> and I'm only getting us to that lower place of humanity only to raise you up to royalty. A -a Amen. 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 Hallelujah. And if my behavior is not in line with my desire, my conscience still confirms the excellence of the law. And now I realize. That it is no longer my true self, and this is where you've got to really pay attention, it's no longer my true self doing it, but what? But the unwelcome intruder of sin in my humanity. 
For I know that nothing good lives within the flesh of my fallen humanity. The longing to do what is right and within me, but willpower is not enough to accomplish it. My lofty desires is to do what is good and dash. But when I do the thing I want to avoid, keep going, just let, just a little bit more, y'all, and then I'm going to get on out of here. So if my behavior contradicts my desires, then this is what we're trying to fix. See, see, 1 Thessalonians 5, 23 is trying to fix this. That So if my behavior contradicts my desires to do good, I must conclude that it is not my true identity doing it, but the unwelcome intruder of sin hiding or hindering me from being who I really am. Through my experience of this principle, I discover that even when I want to do good, evil is ready to sabotage me. Oh my God. Truly deep within my true identity, I love to do what pleases God. Watch this now. Keep going. Watch this. But I discern another power operating in my humanity, waging a war against my moral principles of my conscience and bringing me into captivity as a prisoner to the law of sin. This unwelcome intruder in my humanity. Now, now look what it says now, bringing me into captivity. Remember that, bringing me into captivity. In other words, here it is, this sin that's on the inside of me, it's got me doing stuff I don't wanna do. So now I've become a sinner based off those things. And then I get Jesus, the righteousness of Jesus, with no renewed mind, and I'm still doing the same thing. When you get the renewed mind, all of a sudden, now you got the, the, the things of God inside you, you can make the right move. This is why you have to go forth slowly so that you can understand how to possess your soul. Watch this. All right, keep going. <clears throat> What an agonizing situation I'm in, of all of us. So who has the power to rescue this miserable man from the unwelcome intruder of sin and death? Who has the power to do that? I give all my thanks to God, for his mighty power has finally provided a way out through our Lord Jesus, the anointed one. So if left to myself, the flesh is aligned with the law of sin, but now, everybody say now. Now, say it again. My renewed mind is fixed on and submitted to God's righteous principles. Y'all hear that? Come on, get the Lord a hand cap on that. That's real talk. That cover everybody up in here. Everybody in here. This is why you have to pay attention to this stuff. Now, now, first Thessalonians 5 23, real quick. Amen. Hallelujah. Ain't that some powerful stuff right there? I know it was a lot of reading, but I'm telling you right now, it uncovers everybody and everybody that think they something, it'll break you all the way down only to build you back up. <laughs> Amen. And, and see, once you understand, you said something, you said something earlier, you said we are little gods. And see, people don't hate to hear that. They, they hate to hear it, but here's the thing about it. Um, if you had an apple, right, and you get the seed out and you put it in the ground, and, and, and then you, you, know, you cultivate it and stuff like that, then what happens when it finally grow up as a tree and then it gives off fruit? What kind of fruit does it give? It get ap ap not oranges, it's apples, right? So the fruit don't lie. So, so, so y'all sure the fruit don't lie? The fruit don't lie. All right, well, let's look at this first before we get to this right here. First, let's go to, uh, let's go to Genesis 126. Watch this. And, and I'm saying that because what you said, we are the little G's in this earth, right? We are the God of the earth, but the enemy, because he tricked us. Now, watch this now. He became the God of the earth because he was the one that, uh, that Adam began to to obey right the bible so whoever you yield your members to obey that's your lord whoever you yield your members to obey that's your lord this is why first john 1 and 9 is so important when it comes to you getting forgiven and things of that sort so that you can go on clean up that righteousness put you back in right standing with god so that you don't have no blockage when it comes to your blessing that's, that's for real now. I'm talking about, so the day that you hear my voice, I'm talking about God's voice, then don't harden your heart. Harden your heart means this, that I got some seed, and that's what I'm doing now. I'm sowing seed to you right now. 
But if your heart is too hard and you don't want to hear it and all those other kind of things or you walk out of here and, and, and guess what? Nothing happens. When you walk out of here and nothing happens, it means that that seed fell on some concrete. Yes. Yes, it the day you hear his voice, harden not your heart. Receive it. And when you receive it, don't look for it to happen the next day. It happened internally before you show it externally. That's what baptism is all about. Baptism has nothing to do with you putting somebody under that water until on the inside has been cleaned righteousness. And then we do an external thing. Amen. That happened to the internal. Amen. Hallelujah. Watch this. So, and God said, let us make man in our what? In our image and in our likeness. Amen. So if we're in God's image and in his likeness, then it makes sense. And I'm, I already know I'm getting some flack on this one, but it don't make no difference. Listen to this. You know, and I see people say this. Say, OK, God says he breathed in man uh, 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 and he became a living. Come on, y'all. Soul. He became a living what? He became a living soul. So most people said that's a speaking spirit because that's that's Hebrew. And it's a speaking spirit. And they are right. We are a speaking spirit. But the, the part that they really don't want to pay attention to is the fact that now we begin to act like God. See, the soul of man, amen, has to be filled with God, guided by God's spirit. That's your heart. That's your subconscious. It has to be guided by the spirit of the living God. Put it up there, Romans 8 and 16. Watch this now, because this particular verse, it is what really happened to you in Romans 10, 9 and 10. When you asked Jesus to be Lord of your life, God reappeared. God has come on the scene. He has reconnected himself with you. Amen. His big S spirit has come with your little S spirit only to get you back where you're supposed to be. And it's called redemption. The new birth. And here come God giving you all the ability that you didn't have before. See, your, your, now your faith should be able to be able to use your faith, not because of a human faith, but it should be God's faith. That's on the inside of you. Amen. Because every time you try to use your faith, you get disappointed. But when you're using God's faith, because God's faith always, listen to this, it pays no attention to your circumstances. God's faith don't care. Matter of fact, God's faith is for your circumstances. Amen. Amen. Your fear always concentrate on your circumstances. Your faith always concentrate on your future. Always. Always. Amen. So, it's, it's, so, so when you find yourself thinking about something too long, feeling something too long, amen, you better get some word. You better hurry up and get to church. Because if you want to stop doing what you've been doing all this time, there's some people in here, you've been saying, I'm going to stop this for a long, long time. Come on, y'all. Come on. Come on. Yeah, yeah, come on now. I, I, I said I was going to stop last year. And the year before that, 20 years ago, I said I was going to stop. The only reason you cannot stop it is because you can't throw words away or throw, you can't throw thoughts away. You have to replace them. And the only way you're going to replace them is being repetitive. You have to come to church and get enough word to drive it out of you. That's why the Bible says, take most earnest heed what you hear, right? Or you'll lose it. See, it's some of you right there now. You hear me, but you ain't really listening. Because God's word is supposed to penetrate your intentions. If it doesn't penetrate your intentions, you will go out and do the same thing you've been doing. It has to be sharp enough to, first of all, dismantle your comfortableness. 
It has to dismantle this one that's been in control. Uh, put it up there, Hebrews 4 and 12. And it's talking about the sword of the spirit and what it's able to do. I just showed you Romans, uh, in Romans 8 and 16. God's spirit comes bear witness with your spirit that you are a child of God. Right. I showed you first, first Thessalonians, your spirit, your soul and your body being together is what God is trying to create. Before I go to 4 and 12, Haley, let's go ahead and look at 1 John 5 and 7. And I'm going to show you this real quick because this ultimately was God is trying to create. He's trying to create this oneness in you. And, and maybe this when you know when you start talking to people, maybe you can explain who God is based off this particular verse right here. It said, for there are three that bear record in heaven. Amen. It didn't say earth. Earth will be under that one. And I'll show you that one in a minute. But uh, uh, there are three that bear record in heaven. God, the who? The father and the, the word and the Holy Ghost, and they are what? They are one. Amen. This is what Jesus said when he would ask him questions. He said, I do nothing of myself. I do what I see my daddy do. But yet, we still try to separate them, not knowing that Jesus said this also. If you see me, you've seen your father. So he's trying to get you to see how vast he is and, and, the, and the timing and different things like that mean nothing with God. So how are you going to explain God being in Mary without a man touching her? And his name is what? Emmanuel, God with us. Hallelujah. Amen. So when you're explaining who you are, remember over in the book of Isaiah it says this, unto Mary and Joseph a son is given over in the, in the uh, in the New Testament, unto Mary and Joseph a son is given, but to the world a savior. Is that right? Well, you are not down here by osmosis. You are here for a reason. Put it up there, Jeremiah 1 and 5. Watch this now. You, you're, you're here for a reason, and I love the fact that he didn't leave this to question. He gave you that fingerprint so that you couldn't, you couldn't compare yourself with nobody. He, I don't know, 8 billion people, he gave you that fingerprint just so you could never say, Lord, why did you treat me a certain way and all those kinds of things. Because when you get born again is the moment that your identity is supposed to actually be realized. Amen. Look at this. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. Before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. And I what? I ordained thee a prophet to the nation. Simply saying this, I gave you a purpose. I gave you a purpose. Put this one up there. Jeremiah 29 and 11. He got a plan to prosper you, not to harm you, to bring you to an expected end. And folks don't want to, there's certain things they don't want to accept in church. I just don't understand that. They don't want to accept, they don't want to accept any of the things, especially when you start talking about tongues and stuff like that. And you know, it's something they don't believe and something they already got this, this prejudice against. Don't understand why none of those things and you have to sit down and I understand if you go to a church and that's all we doing and, and, and nobody explain anything. I understand. it. <laughs> I, I really do. But this ain't the church that's going to do that. I ain't going to send you down a road and don't tell you what it means. And if I don't know what it means, I'm going to just tell you I don't know. <laughs> Amen. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you. Uh, put it in the Amplified class so they can see plans and thoughts. This is God now. Watch this now. For I know the thoughts and plans that I have for you, says the Lord, thoughts of plans of welfare and peace and not of evil to give you hope in your final outcome. See, see this is the thing about God. You know, the moment that you begin to obey God is the moment that the blessings start. And, you, and, and we keep going backwards. In other words, we, we accept what I'm telling me, uh, what I'm telling you right now. You'll accept that. But then you make no adjustments in your life, so you go backwards. Amen. When you accept it going forward, listen to what the Bible says now. Now, y'all remember we just read all of Romans chapter 7? Y'all remember that, right? And he said, the will to do, in other words, I don't know how to help myself. To will to do that is not in my hands, right? Because the will of man, I'm talking about your doing, the will of man is stronger than the will of God for your life. Amen. The strongest thing God ever gave you, the greatest thing he ever gave you was your will. Y'all believe that? 
All right. But it also can be the worst thing he gave you because you could take your will and fight against him. <laughs> Ain't that something? So now you got to get your will in, uh, in place in order for you to automatically, because the algorithm that's on the inside of you, I'm talking about a program and they come from the world. That program has to first of all be digged out of you, dug out of you. <laughs> it, 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 English professors, they got to be dug out of you first of all. And once, once you've been dismounted, this is why I tell you all the time, when you come in here, feel that, you feel that, 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 that part of you that, that feels like it's not you no more. Embrace that part. Don't, don't, don't say, that's just me, or that's just him. No, that's the part he's trying to get rid of. So <laughs> in here, when you're feeling vulnerable, is the time that God is making change. Amen. He's he making change on the inside of you. And that's, let's go on, go over there now to uh, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. And, and, and um, so that you can see, we, we already saw the body, soul, and the spirit, and things like that in the first Thessalonians. We saw in A16, God, spirit come in. But we're going to see this sword of the spirit, which is the word of God and what it's supposed to do. Amen. See, most of us in here really don't know who we are. I'm talking about identity-wise. Amen. So we always mimic somebody else. We, all, we always mimic somebody else instead of mimicking Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Watch this now. Uh, for the word of God is quick. It's powerful. Right? It's sharper than any two-edged sword. Let me read it again. For the word of God is quick and powerful. Sharper than any two-edged sword. Oh, hold on a second. Let me ask y'all a question. Um... Who's got a best friend? It looks like everybody got a best friend. When was the last time y'all talked to him? <laughs> look, look, talk, talk. Uh -huh. Yesterday? This morning? Look at that. Okay. Last time you talked to your best friend. Two months ago? You sure that's your best friend? <laughs> I'm just, no, that's good. That's a good thing. Best friend? This morning? Okay. You, you talking about your wife? <laughs> can get you in trouble in a minute. Okay, all right, so. <laughs> oh. <laughs> hey, hey, at least he's still there. Amen, praise God. Tell George I need to see him. No, I'm just playing. Amen. <laughs> Amen. No, the reason I asked who's your best friend it's simply because I knew that you had communicated. When was the last time you talked to God and he said something back? I, I ain't no hands? <laughs> he said yesterday, you got that. Okay, all right, all right. And why am I saying that? Because if the word of God is valuable enough to you, you'll be holding on to that word like it's money. Which it is, it's better than silver and in gold, because the creator is the one that actually said it. Y'all hear that, don't you? So you ought to be running up in here to get what he said. And not making up something in your own life, but say exactly what he said. Exactly. Live by what he said. Y'all hear that, don't you? I'm talking about everything that you do, live by what he said. Y'all hear that, don't you? Amen. And I'm going to show that to you real quick. Look at Luke chapter 4, real quick. Amen. Hallelujah. Luke 4, watch this. Jesus, full of the Holy Ghost, returned unto Jordan. He was led by his spirit, capital S. He was led by the spirit into the wilderness. Keep going. Watch this now. Being 40 days, oh my God. Now, 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 now let me say this to you uh, before I read this. Listen to this. The strength of your will, what you're willing to do, will be based off what you're willing to take away from your soul. In other words, when you go on a fast, only thing you're doing is gaining control of your vessel. That's what a fast is all about. 
is to break the bands in your life, the controls in your life, the people in your life. You ain't got to tell them what you're doing. Look, I, I just can't be with no rider right now. I'm in a fast. You ain't got to tell them if you don't want them about the fast and trying to get some kind of credit. But I'm saying the fast is for a reason. The fast is so you can gain control so that the devil won't be in control. Y'all don't believe that, do you? It's the truth. Well, I, I'll show you one. I'll show you one place. We'll come back to this, Haley. Let's 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 go to First uh, Corinthians chapter seven. Watch this. Watch this. So so men don't get mad. I'm just gonna read this. Watch this. Now concerning the things whereof I wrote unto thee, it is not good for a man to touch a woman. Of course, you know that's. We have to explain all that. Keep going. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, to avoid, to avoid, to avoid fornication. Let every man have his own wife and let every woman have her own husband. Let the husband render unto the wife do benevolence or be kind. And likewise, y'all hear that, don't you? Do benevolence. Do benevolence. Do means that it's something that you owe. You owe to be kind. See, see now, now you know what to look for. Joe ain't kind. He ain't the one. Now we keep going. All right. Let the husband run unto the wife, do benevolent, and likewise also the wife unto the husband. The wife have not power of her own body, but the husband. And likewise also the husband, he ain't got power of his own body, but the wife. Power meaning this, that if I go to Home Depot and get a, a lock, it comes with a key, right? So it doesn't matter how mad the key get at the lock, they still have to do what? Go together in order to get access to something. Is that not right? Okay, so here it is. The wife have not power of her own body, but the husband. And likewise, also the husband have not power of his body, but the wife. Now, keep going. Watch this now. Now, watch this. Defraud ye not one, except it be for a consent for a time. Now, defraud ye not. You really need to put seven and five in the Amplified Classic so that they can see what that means. Amen. Do not refuse. Y'all see that? And deprive and defraud each other of your due marital rights except now here we go except perhaps by mutual consent for a time so that you may devote yourselves unto prayer but afterwards resume marital relationships or the devil will tempt you y'all understand that y'all see that so so god is trying to get you to get control of this thing Amen. And a fast is always the way. So one of the ways a fast is one of the ways that you gain control of your will. And when you gain control of your will, I'm trying to tell y'all something now. Why you ain't stopping doing what you're doing? Because your will is, is, is a program. I'm just saying you, you, because your will is something that you already believe in your subconscious. And it's moved by emotions. So here, here it is. Your, here it is. Your soul contacts your senses. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm just saying. You're hearing. Why he said, take the most earnest thing what you hear. He 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 knows if you keep hearing the wrong thing, then it's getting in your heart, and that's what you become. Remember, what Proverbs says. It, it, it says, so as a man thinketh in his heart, that's who he is. So it's not you believe in what you say you believe. When I see your will operating, that's who you really are. That's, that's who you really are. Amen. That, that's who you really are. And so now we have to deal with the part that's in the heart. And we, we really have to get you to <laughs> clean that thing out. And there's a way of doing it. I just showed you. Let, go back to uh, Hebrews 4 and 12. Hebrews 4 and 12. So you can see what this 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 sword does. Even and, and I'm only saying this stuff simply because you'll understand. Look, God ain't trying to hurt you. He is trying to get you down to a place where your humility. Do you not know that the 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 identity that you have it is actually lofty or it stands in the way of God simply because your identity you think is you to the point where you refuse to change. And that's why he got this sword so he can break you down only to reel you up. Watch this. So the word of God is quick and powerful, 
sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even the dividing asunder of what? Wait a minute. So you mean to tell me he's going to separate my soul? I'm talking about the word of God. Separate my soul and my spirit and joints and marrow. And I tell you about all that stuff. And is a discerner of thoughts. You mean to tell me now I can actually discern my thoughts? This is now I know because if it's all together, if your soul and your heart and all that stuff is already together, then it takes the word of God to separate it so that you can know discerning your thoughts and your intentions of the heart. Because without God, I'm talking about your heart is just messed up anyhow. Put it up there, Jeremiah 17, 9, so that they can see that. Watch this. The heart is deceitful above all and wicked. Who can know it? Look, look at this. I didn't put that up there. That, 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 uh, Haley did that. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> no, no. So keep going. Watch this. Watch this. I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his what? His ways and according to the doings, of the fruits of his doing. So the will, your will being weak to whatever that may be, is the reason why you keep doing what you're doing and you keep receiving what you keep receiving simply because you're really not in control of your will. And, and, and so you're on automatic pilot, but you know, automatic pilot ain't no good if you ain't got no engines to come out of it. Automatic pilot means if them engines don't turn back on, it'd be like this dude that had tried to land on the expressway in Florida. You did. That, that's all I'm saying. You're, you're leading somewhere. You got to remember what we saw in, in, in Romans 7. Your sin is leading you somewhere. You remember the verse I used to share with y'all all the time about sin actually fooled me. Made me think I was really doing something good and I ended up destroying myself. Lead you right on out of there. Away from God. See, I, you know what? I, I thank God for my wife in this sense. Listen at this. I didn't want nobody else. If you knew my, my past life. I, I don't want no, no, I want some money. No, I don't want no woman. He introduced me to her. He, he said, I want you to meet this lady. I don't want to meet no woman. I was living in my church down there on Raleigh LeGrand. I don't want, want them. I want some money. That's what I want. And don't, and told my sister-in-law, don't tell nobody I live in the church because she kept on coming back. It looked like my brother-in-law, uh, truck. Yeah, kept on coming back there. She said, I keep seeing your truck there day and night, day and night. I said, oh, okay then. She came by that one day and sit. She said, you living in there. I said, listen now. Listen. You remember this thing? I said, look now. Don't tell my mom and dad because I already know what they're going to say. And then they'll go tell all the rest of my brothers and sisters and things like that. Shoot, I couldn't. By the time I got over my dad's house, she, they already knew. I didn't know you were living in your house. I said, look at this joker right here. See, people think they're doing you a favor when you hey, I told you no, right? So, so then this brother, he was, he was a minister at the church, and he said, I want you to meet this lady and stuff like that. I said, uh, all right. I, so he just begged me, so I said, okay, I'll meet her. And it took me seven days to even make the call. When I called her, she was just as, uh, you know, she was just as spiritual as I was. She knew just as much word as I knew. And so it wasn't really no help there. And I really was still thinking about money. I was like, okay, thank you. And that was it. We ain't talk no more. And then next thing I know, she called me and said, or text me. You text me and said, I, I just need a question, uh, answer to a question about something going on with a mom or something like that. And she got on that phone. And the first thing I said, wait a minute, let's pray. She said, that was it. Let's pray. And then I knew I needed some money. I told y'all this. Now, y'all better listen to this part. Then we'll get back. Watch this. I knew I needed some money. So the way you get money is learn how to sow. I got me an envelope and wrote on there because she had just moved back from Dallas. I wrote on that envelope, this is a seed coming to you. I didn't know. See, God, it was all God stuff. I took that thing over there at 10 o'clock in the morning on a Saturday and gave it to her. She said, you didn't even know I didn't. She didn't see it then. She, she told me, you didn't know I ain't had no money at all. I ain't had no gas money at the time. So it was right on time for God. Amen. Now, now listen at this. Here come a joker I'm finna go talk to a woman. Give her this seed, right? I'm talking about how God, see, look, look. God wants to work in your life. 
You just got to give him some time. Most of us always want to make the choice ourselves and want him to jump in it. It don't work. It don't work like that. You got to give him some space because he got to repair him and you first because he wants you to do First Thessalonians 5, 23. He wants you to be whole first before you talk about going somewhere else. Come on, y'all. Amen. So anyhow, at the end of that two hour over her house, when I gave her that thing, she, she asked me a question. And I said, well, well, well what is the question? She said, uh, what did the Holy Spirit? I said, wait a minute, this girl knows a little something about the Holy Spirit do. She said, what did the Holy Spirit tell you? I said, you're supposed to be my wife. She said, I know. Just, just like that now. Y'all think we waited? No, sir. We waited until the date that, I mean, like three or four months out of that. But we finna do this. It was settled. Amen. I went to that wedding that night, and I had to do the wedding. I was the one that was officiating the wedding. It was 200 people in there. And I'm telling y'all this story for a reason. Look, it was 200 people in that wedding. I was the happiest man in there. For real. They getting married and everything, and people coming up there and listening. And I was telling jokes and all kinds of things. Like, what kind of preacher is this? Hey! Hey! He put me up there. My friend, he was the one who had me doing it and stuff like that. He got there. He was nervous. He was about 6'4". He was nervous. I said, whatever you do, don't put the, the, don't put the ring on her thumb. Right? Everybody laughed and stuff after the service. And everybody was like, where did this preacher come from? I want you to do my wedding. Just like that. And, and it was a beautiful, beautiful thing. And so we went from there. And, uh, and I'm saying that because God fixed that thing only for you to be sitting here today. Amen. Uh, come on now. A amen. Amen. He fixed that. He knew I would leave my underwear in the, in the, in the floor if I didn't have my wife. Or not clean out the tub or something like that. All right. All right. I'll just keep going. All right. So now... <laughs> God, he, he, he try the reins of every heart. Amen. This is why it's so important to make certain that you clean out your heart. Y'all hear me, don't you? How do you clean out your heart? We showed you, we showed you uh, Hebrews 4 and 12. You use the sword of the spirit to, to do that right. And so, so here, here is something that's going to help you. Well, let's first of all look at this. Genesis um, 8 and 21. Let's look at this. Genesis 8 and 21 because now when you, when you come in here, and you got the ability now to slow your thoughts down and find out who's saying it. Is the devil saying it? Have I already established that what I want, whether it's good or bad? That's the wheel. Have I already established that? So when I try to make a God decision, what I've already established will be in the way. Y'all hear me, don't you? It'll be in the way. Now watch this now. And the Lord smelled the sweet savior. And I'm, saying, I'm trying, to say, trying to tell you how the, the imagination is supposed to house where you're going. And it's part of that soul thing. It's part of it. So here it is. The Lord, the, the, uh, the, the Lord smelled the sweet savior. And the Lord said in his heart, I will not again curse the ground anymore for man's sake. For his what? His imagination. Amen. Of man's heart is evil from his youth. Neither will I again smite them. Uh, put, put Genesis 6 and 5 so they can see another imagination. And I'm going to end at 2 Corinthians chapter 10. But watch this. When God saw that the wickedness of man, it was great in the earth. And every imagination of the thoughts of the heart was only evil continuously or over and over again. That's the, the shape that we was in. Amen. Now, the imagination is supposed to house something when you get together, especially married people and stuff like that. When you get together and you say, this is where we're going, that's what it's supposed to house. And I'm not going to go there, but it's in Genesis chapter 11, and it's dealing with the, with the Tower of Babylon. Amen. And it's talking about coming together so that this power as one will go forth. Amen. But I'm going I'm to I'm end it with this one right here. Second Corinthians chapter 10 verses 3 through 5. And we're going to put it in the regular King James and then we're going to put it in the Amplified Classic. And then I'm going to end it with that. And they said, uh, where, where is that? That ain't it. That ain't it. <clears throat> yeah, there you go right there. Um, casting. Well, we'll start at five. Casting down those what? Imagination because you can. 
Remember now, remember what I showed you earlier in Hebrews 4 and 12, where you, the, the sword of the spirit goes between the soul and all of those things, right? So, so you can now, so cast down, put it in the Amplified class so they can see that part there. Inasmuch as we refute arguments, that's this inside thing that's going on inside of us. It's your facts versus God's truth. Amen. And as much as we refute arguments and theories and reasonings, see, some of y'all don't think I know what I be talking about, but I don't get my reasoning from me. I get it from him. And because I get it from him. So when I'm counseling, don't think I'm just trying to do something or tell you something just to tell you I ain't doing that. I wouldn't do that to you because I'm too dumb for it. For one, I have to let God do this stuff. It ain't me. Amen. And as much as we refute arguments and theories and reasonings and, and every proud and lofty thing that sets itself up against the true knowledge of God, we lead every thought. We lead every thought and purpose away captive into the obedience of Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one. So you casting down imagination is you have to, first of all, know that you hear Satan. Amen. Now you have to put something in place to stop this joker because of what he just said. Let's say, I'm going to give you a good example. If he try to put a woman on your mind, Brother Malcolm, watch this. Try another woman, watch this. When he's when he trying to do that, he do it all to all of us. Any man, it, it ain't Malcolm, it Steve, me, my brother, everybody up in here. Any man, look, he's going to try to use your imagination to do that. But if you don't catch him, then you will feed that thing. The Bible says, listen at this, sow to your flesh, you reap corruption. If you sow to your spirit, you reap life evermore. Amen. So, so now what you have to do when you catch this joker, this is what I do. I ain't lying. She can, a woman come through here and be fine. Woo, good God Almighty. Right? Then I say, bring her up one more time. And I am going to pray that she gets saved. Now bring it up again and see it on. I pray just for her to get. Matter of fact, I'm going to pray for her to get saved in there. He gone then. Because he don't want that. Yeah, y'all got it. I'm this stuff for real now. That's part of casting down. That's part of bringing thoughts into obedience to Christ. Amen. It ain't taking nothing from your manhood. You know what I'm saying? It ain't indicting you. I ain't trying to indict you. I'm trying to get you to see that the reality of being in this earth is not you playing like you got it all together. I don't see no woman. I don't see you. Keep on. You're going to see a man. Uh oh. Uh -oh. I know I'm finna end it now. <laughs> get it all the hand cap. Amen. Give it up for Jesus. Oh my God. Thank you, Lord. Pastor, thank you for that word. Amen. Thank you. You brought thank tears you, to my eyes. Amen. It gave me a, a, another reason to be grateful, another Amen. opportunity. Yes. As we got up this morning, God yes. gave us another opportunity. Yes. Amen. It's offering time. If you don't have an offering envelope, raise your hand and the usher give you one. I'm just going to go through your, this offering envelope and tell you what's in it. If you're a visitor, you can fill it out. We're not going to call you and bug you, but we'll be praying for you. Amen. And on the back side, if you have a prayer request and you uh, believe uh, want somebody to believe, leave with you fill it out and put it in the offering book pastor and i are always here praying and if it's a confidential you can put it in the little gray bucket i mean silver bucket back there where vanessa's at uh then we have the building fund envelope yes. and then also pastor and i are deployed by god so yes. this is a love offering envelope if you want to sow a seed into our yes. life we thank god for everybody that have done uh and then we have the tithe and offering envelope if you're making out checks make it out to mind of christ and if you need to spell million, it's spell M I L L I O N S. Yes. And then we're on Ghibli Five. And then also uh, we are on the website mocc.org. You can hit the give button. And if this message was a, a, a benefit to you, you can always go to um, uh, YouTube and go to Mount of Christ Christian Center, and then you can subscribe, and you will get these messages all the time. I listen to them on Sunday nights when I'm just laying there. I be wanting to hear the Word of God over and over again, not just Amen. on Sundays. Amen. I hear it all the time. Amen. Amen. So just concentrate on what the Spirit of God is calling you to give.
Thank you. He's Father. amazing. Yes, he is. That is amazing. I'm telling y'all, this is, this is the year he's going to do something so great in your life. There won't be no more doubt. Amen. I, 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 amen. Amen. It, it, it ain't going to be no more doubt that he's real. Amen. Because you're going to have enough information even when you think things going to go wrong. They'll go right simply because of what's on the inside of you. Thank you, and Jesus. at some point it has to come up. Amen. Amen. And then you have so much favor in God, he'll make your mistakes to prosper. Come on now. Thank Amen. you, Jesus. And he'll never balance. let your words hit the ground. That's right. And he'll balance out that scale just for you. Just for you. Amen. Oh, my God. Great expectations. Yes. Glory to God. So if you finish with that, you can raise your right hand. We're going to pray over our seed. Yes. Uh, even if you sold on, online. We're on Ghibli 5. You sold online. Just raise your right hand because you got great expectations. You yes. know, you got to take the word of God. And you you. got to speak it over your seed. Yes. Because like pastors say, a farmer don't plant the seed and don't come out and yes. put no water on the ground. Yes. You got to water your seed with mm. the word of God Amen. and have great expectations Amen. that it's going to manifest. Yes. So Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank Thank you, Father. Yes. We thank you for the seed we're able to sow, Father. Hallelujah. As we plant the seed into good ground, it'll come up and break through concrete, yes. Father. Father, thank you that you're showing us favor wherever you go, Father. Oh Father, we thank you for Malachi 3, 8, 9, and 10. You said bring the tithes into the storehouse yes. so there will be meat in your house. Meat yes. means the word of God. That Hallelujah. So pastor don't have to go to work. He can study and give us the seed, the incorruptible seed, the word of God. Yes. Luke 6, 38 said give, it is given unto us. Oh my Good God. measures, pressed down, shaken yes. together, Thank and running over shall men pour into our bosoms. Yes. That's opportunities. Yes. That's the lean holder. That's the underwriter. Yes. That's favor when you yes. go somewhere. So Father, we thank you for favor. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We praise you that we got great expectations. Great. That our account going to be an overabundant supply, yes. Father. Lord. And before this year is out, Father, I'm calling it a richness. Yes. You said you make one rich and you add no soil. Hallelujah. And I see myself there. Yes. So right now we thank you. Thank you, Lord. And we praise you again. Yes. Lord. As we sow into the kingdom. Oh my God. You may serve the people. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Oh my God. Yes. Thank, thank you, Lord God.